Hello everyone. Welcome to the event. So today we will discuss one more concept in PHRP that is prefix. So to start with, let us have the definition of prefix. What exactly are prefix? So let us have a brief introduction. The term prefix is derived from a Greek word prefix. Prefix meaning and these liquids are the heterogeneous compounds in the sense they will contain elements other than carbon and hydrogen. Unlike proteins, nucleic acids, and polysaccharides, liquids are not polymers. Liquids are not polymers in the sense they are single monomer unit or they are small molecules. They are the means of storage of energy and they also have other roles to be played that is in cellular structure and other biological functions. So it is derived from a Greek word, liquids meaning fat, and they are not polymers, they are monomers, they are small molecules, and these liquids are heterogeneous groups of compounds. And right? other than carbon and hydrogen, they will contain other elements like oxygen and phosphate groups. And the exact definition of lipids, they are the organic substances which are relatively insoluble in water, but they are soluble in organic solvents and they are potentially related to fatty acids and they are utilized by the living things as a means of energy reservoir. And here you have an individual liquid and this is the bilayer of the liquid. If you just observe the structure of liquid, you can see a red colored spherical structure and two green colored tail like structures. This head structure, it is hydrophilic in nature. In the sense, they are water lover, they, are, they have a tendency towards water. But this green tail like structure, they are hydrophobic in nature, they don't like water, they run away from water. So, liquid has two parts. One is hydrophilic in nature and the other is hydrophobic in nature. And the below diagram represents the bilayer representation of liquid where you can observe these red color structures are facing exterior and green like structures are facing interior because they are hydrophobic in nature. They can't be exposed to water, but they are they can be exposed to oily like structures. But these hydrophobic, that is red like structures, since they are water loving, they can be exposed to the exterior of the cell. Next, we have the classification of lipids. Lipids can be briefly classified into two classes fatty acids and glycerides. And these fatty acids are further classified into saturated and unsaturated depending on the presence of single as well as double bonds. And these glycerides are further classified into neutral glycerides as well as the phosphoglycerides depending on the nature of the functional groups which are found attached to the compound. Then lipids can also be further divided into non-glyceride lipids and one of the complex lipids. These non-glyceride lipids are further classified into waxes, spinolipids, steroids. And the spinolipids are further classified into sphingomyelins and glycolipids. And these complex lipids are further classified into lipoproteins. So this is what the brief classification of lipids. Please do follow this. The chart it becomes easier to understand. Coming to the fatty acids. So fatty acids, you can just have a look on this structure. You can see a long hydrocarbon chain, which is in turn attached to a carboxylic group at the terminal. So any long hydrocarbon chain which is in turn attached to a carboxylic acid group. At its terminal end can be referred as fatty acid. But still, in terms of definition, fatty acids are the molecules which have a carboxylic group attached to the terminal end of a long hydrocarbon chain. The fatty acids can be further transferred into saturated and unsaturated. So, if you just observe this structure here. The carbon and the hydrogen are held by single sigma bond and the terminal they are attached to a carboxyl group. 
the fatty acids are classified according to the presence and number of double bonds in their carbon chain. So saturated fatty acid, which are simply written as SFA, they do contain only single bonds. And like they are saturated, they contain only the sigma bonds. Coming to the unsaturated, unsaturated can be monounsaturated as well as polyunsaturated. If any fatty acid contains only one double bond in its structure, then it is referred as monounsaturated fatty acids, what we generally call as MUFA, M-U-F-A. And polyunsaturated fatty acids are those which do contain more than one number of double bonds in their chain structure. They are referred as MUFA or polyunsaturated fatty acids. Further, unsaturated fatty acids are classified into cis and trans depending on the arrangement or the attachment of hydrogen to the carbon which is in turn attached to a double bond. So in this structure you can observe this is a trans form where you can see the hydrogen which are in turn attached to the carbon held by double bond are present opposite to each other. So such unsaturated fatty acids are referred as cis forms. And if you just observe the second structure here, the hydrogens that are attached to the carbon held by double bond are present in the same plane. Right? They are present adjacent to each other. So such forms are referred as cis form. So unsaturated fatty acids further classified into cis and trans depending on the position of the hydrogen. If the hydrogen attached to a double bonded carbon are on opposite to each other, then they are referred as transform. If the hydrogen atoms attached to a double bonded carbon are found on the same plane or found adjacent to each other, then they are referred as cis forms. Next, we have some of the saturated as well as unsaturated fatty acids. So please do understand because from this concept, they may ask you to give the structure of saturated and unsaturated fatty acids along with their some of the properties. So to start with, let us start with lauric acid. The first structure where you can see it is a saturated fatty acid with 12 carbon atoms in its chain. Or in other words, you can just tell that this fatty acid has a 12 carbon backbone. And the major component, uh, lauric acid, it is mainly found in coconut oil. It has a molecular formula of C12H2442. Synonymously, the other name of lauric acid is dodecanoic acid. I'll repeat, lauric acid, a saturated fatty acid with 12 carbon in its chain. It's a 12 carbon chain fatty acid. It is majorly found in the coconut oil. It has a formula of C12H2402 and the other name of lauric acid is dodecanoic acid. And the next structure is the meristic acid. It's a saturated fatty acid. It has got 14 carbon atoms in its long chain. And it is mainly found or majorly found in palm oil as well as butter fat and sometimes it is also found in coconut oil. The formula of meristic acid is C14H28O2. The other name of meristic acid is tetradecanoic acid. I shall repeat, meristic acid, one of the saturated fatty acid with 14 carbon in its plain chain and it is abundantly found in palm oil, butter fat and minorly found in coconut oil. It has a formula of C14H28O2 and the other name of moisture acid is tetradecanoic acid. Next we have palmitic acid. Again it's a saturated fatty acid where you have carbon carbon atoms held by sigma bond, no double bonds. And this fatty acid contains 16 carbon atoms in its backbone. So it is a 16 carbon chain. It is major component of 
palm oil as well as palm kernel oil. It's a major component of palm oil as well as palm kernel oil. It is also found in butter, cheese, milk and meat. It has a formula P60H32O2 and the synonym of palmitic acid is hexadecanoic acid. Yes. Next, to the right you have stearic acid. Again, it's a saturated fatty acid. The 18 carbon chain means it has 18 carbon in its long fatty acid chain and it is abundantly found in shea butter and cocoa butter. It has a formula of C18H36O2 and the other name of stearic acid is octahedronic acid. So all these four acids that is chloric acid, peristic acid, palmitic acid as well as the stearic acid, they do come under saturated fatty acids with the carbon atoms extending between 12 to 18. Next, we have folic acid. It's a unsaturated fatty acid. Mono unsaturated fatty acid. You can observe in the script it has got a single double bond. It has got 18 carbon in its parent chain or the carbon backbone. And these fatty acids are generally referred as MOFA, mono unsaturated fatty acid. Folic acid is a major component of olive oil with a molecular formula P18H34O2. And other name of folic acid is 6 9 octa decanoic acid. I'll repeat 6 9 octa decanoic acid. In the same, the unsaturated fatty acid is in this form where you can see both the hydrogen atoms are lying in the same plane. They are not present opposite to each other. They are lying in the same plane and the double bond is found at ninth position. So the name is cis 9 octa decanoic acid O C T A D E C E N O I C octa decanoic acid or Z octa dec 9 decanoic acid. Next we have linoleic acid. It's a polyunsaturated fatty acid. General referred as Kupa. It has got 18 carbon atoms in its longest fatty acid chain. And these acids are majorly found in vegetable oils. Means these acids can be derived from vegetables such as sunflower, soybean, corn, as well as nuts and seeds. Linoleic acid has a formula C18H32O2 and the other name of linoleic acid is 9, 12, 15 octa deca triinoic acid. I shall repeat 9, 12, 15 octa deca triinoic acid. Since it's a polyunsaturated compound, it has got more than one number of double bonds. You can see it has got three double bonds, one at ninth position and the other at 12 and the other at 15 position. Next we have linoleic, linoleic acid. It can also be referred as alpha linoleic acid. These are generally referred as flax seed oil because these fatty acids are abundantly derived from flax seeds. It's a 18 carbon chain fatty acid and this acid can also be derived from nuts like walnuts and seeds like flax seeds. 
it has got the molecular formula Ca2H32O3 and towards the right we have arachidonic acid by looking into the number of double bonds we can easily analyze that it is a polyunsaturated fatty acid with four double bonds it's a 20 carbon fatty acid chain and this acid is abundantly found in cell of brain muscle and liver of human body the formula is p20 h32 o2 and if you just observe the double bonds they are positioned at 5th 8th 11th and 14th carbon and all the four double bonds are fifth in their position next we have essential fatty acids we know that what are the meaning of essential essential meaning something which is much required the fatty acids are of two types essential and non-essential fatty acids so it doesn't mean that these acids essential means which is required non-essential means which is not required but here that's not the meaning essential fatty acids are those fatty acids which are much required to the body but are not synthesized by our body i shall repeat essential fatty acids are those fatty acids which are much required by our body but it is not produced by the body such acids are referred as essential fatty acids and non-essential fatty acids are those fatty acids which are also required by the body that can be produced by the body and you need not add those acids in your diet so here the lines say the body can synthesize most of the parts it needs from the diet however two essential fatty acids like linoleic and linoleic acid cannot be synthesized in the body and must be obtained from the food so the, the acids that are not synthesized by the body but as much required to the body should be added in terms of diet or should be added with food such acids are referred as essential fatty acids well in the next class we'll be discussing about triglycerides phosphohydrates and amino acids for the stock till then take it see you in the next